Okay, we'd like to introduce Barry Trower. We've had Barry on the show before. And Barry is an independent scientist and expert witness regarding Wi-Fi technology and microwave warfare. Now, we sent over Barry a document from Deborah Tavares regarding new technology that the American government are releasing. So we asked Barry to have a look at this technology. Um, we ourselves didn't know much about it. We're not that advanced in that technology. And as this is more Barry's background, we've asked Barry to have a, a look at this and get his opinion on you. Good evening, Barry. How are you doing? Hello, sir. Thank you very much for calling me. No problem at all. Thanks for doing this, Barry. Deborah was on our show uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we um, she sent us over the information, this document, and she's concerned about this technology that was on the, I believe, on the White House government website. Um, and so we we printed out a copy and we sent it over to you and uh, to have a look at. Obviously, you had the chance to have a look at it. Can you tell me what you what you th- what you think? Were your first impressions of the information? Um, it, I, I'm going to upset a few people, sir, by by telling the truth here. Um, it was written by U.S. scientists, and the title of the document is to spur economic growth. In fact, they say here will increase investment dollars. Now, I'm going to take you back to 1976 when this level of radiation was known by the United States research scientists to cause up to uh, 4,500 different illnesses in human beings, depending on stage of growth and state of health. And it was also corroborated by the United Nations and in 1976 this level of radiation uh, was marked basically the documents concerning the, the ill health effects from it were marked top secret and the United States scientists sent a, a report out to the rest of the world mainly Western governments at that time and to paraphrase their sentence what it actually says is that we must, uh, governments must lie to the general populations, otherwise they will realize the ill effects caused by this level of radiation, <coughs> and it will have a massive impact on industrial profit, and of course avoid lawsuits. So what they did is they decided to keep everything secret, and lie to the people over the dangers of this level of radiation (coughs) and in fact they're doing still doing what they set out to do in 1976 when all this was was marked secret uh, whereby by their own writing they say it will spur economic growth and increase industrial profit so they are still maintaining that this is safe against their own research and this entire um, episode, this entire industry, is to make money um, on the ill health of the populations. That's incredible. I mean, that that really ties into the whole pharmaceutical side of things, where you have to get tablets and um, obviously, you know, alternative medicines. They actually, the likes of uh, the cannabis oil and various other treatments that can be used for cancer, they uh, they they won't let people use them, or they make things illegal, or they take them off the market because they want to sell the drugs. Well, uh, you're absolutely correct here, sir. Um, because when I looked at this economic growth and will increase profit, um, you're actually talking, I would think, of about a hundredth of one percent of the country will become immensely rich from this new technology. But most of the rest of the population, certainly a half of the children exposed, will become quite sick, in fact very sick, and some of them will die. Um, And, of course, all of that requires medicines and time off work, and the rest of the population will actually become poorer whilst you have just these very few, and the people in power here, becoming super rich. So you're absolutely correct, sir. Well, the one thing that uh, Deborah has uh, regarding her document, it does say on the document, is this technology safe? 
Um, it's meant to spur economic growth. Um, but will it do that? No, sir. Uh, as I said, it, it is certainly not safe. And in fact, uh, uh, I know you're going to come to it later, but a, a paper which is free of charge I am publishing later this week, um, you, if I'm using the the best U.S. scientists' data and the English scientists' and the World Health Organization's data, we know that at this particular frequency on these wavelengths that they're using, 57.7% of pregnant women will suffer miscarriages, stillbirths, or genetically mutated children. Um, so it's certainly not safe, sir. Um, and these are their figures, not mine. That's um, scary information, Barry. Very scary information, especially next generation. If the actual technology affects our genes and that's passed on through generations, then we are going to have major issues in the next generation and the generation after that. Oh, absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Uh, and it's already started showing. Um, I, I gave a lecture not too long ago at Brighton University and one of the professors there, he actually said um, that this phenomenon now is already showing itself in other mammalian species. Um, and uh, again, uh, in Ireland over there, I presented my paper, which is coming up. I mentioned my paper, or I, I referenced my paper to the Irish Doctors Association who are uh, recognized worldwide for being in incredibly clever. Um, so, I mean, this was discussed fully. Um, so it, it is known, it is recognized, um, and the technology is not being challenged. It can't be challenged because it, it's actually there on the scientific peer review documents. Uh, that the U.S. government and the World Health Organization actually say is going to happen. What we're doing here is we are making a massive profit for a few people on the backs of suffering of the populations, as you say, in the next two, three, four generations. That is, it is very scary. Now, obviously, we're going to talk about is Wi-Fi safe? I mean, what Deborah's document has, but generally we talk about Wi-Fi, and it's linked to Wi-Fi. So, I mean, is it safe? I mean, I think we're pretty sure we can pretty much say that it, it's not. No, sir. Um, Wi-Fi is particularly dangerous to children, and it is particularly dangerous to pregnant women. Um, and the, there, there are several papers published on the frequencies to do with Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi enabled uh, frequencies as this is. The first is that it can induce the autoimmune system of the brain to go into action which um, can actually cause uh, Graves' disease or uh, which is a, a, a neurological uh, state uh, which is detrimental to children. The other pulse frequencies related to microwave radiation um, are feelings where you cannot relax, feeling of being unhappy and it can, if you're super sensitive to it, it can cause problems with anger and manic behavior and even problems with movement and loss of appetite, things like that. Uh, and, and these are published, these are, are well-published frequencies or pulse frequencies, modulation frequencies, um, that parents are already reporting from children in schools with Wi-Fi. It's something that I try to address in my local school, my son's school, uh, Barry, tried to educate the, um, I mentioned it in the parents' meeting, regarding the dangers of Wi-Fi. But, you know, you just get that kind of blank look and you kind of... Uh, they just don't seem to understand because the government has been approved okay. by a government. Well, actually, they're wrong. It's not been approved by government. In fact, the um, European Parliament, they, uh, and I, I've referenced this, and you'll, you'll have it next week, the European Parliament actually wrote ban Wi-Fi from schools. Uh, for legal reasons, it had to be changed 
to a wired system is preferred, but the meaning is the same. And uh, many of the world's leading scientists, in, in professors in many countries, have said why Wi-Fi must not be uh, allowed near children. Uh, and the problem we have with schools is twofold. The first is that uh, when Ofsted, uh, and this again isn't from me, it is from a professor. I gave a lecture at a university and a professor said, I'll tell you what the problem is, Barry. She said, um, when the inspectors come into schools, the government inspectors, um, they have to tick boxes like Ofsted. They tick boxes and schools are terrified of not having that sentence that says this is a technically advanced developing school with excellence and, and all that. Now, if you don't have Wi-Fi and all of these interactive things that you can touch, uh, you don't get ticks in boxes. And this is one of the things that schools are afraid of. And the other thing, of course, is the legality of whoever signs the paper. And it's usually the chair of governors or the, or the principal because Wi-Fi actually has no safety certificate and there is no insurance. So what they're now facing and why they're afraid of it and why they refer back to the government is because they can face super lawsuits uh, over the injuries to children. And I know two, one where uh, the signatory of a document is being sued for 5.2 million pounds and the other where 18 families are suing. Uh, and, you know, when it comes to children, and you will probably find the insurance companies on the advice of Lloyd's about 13 years ago put a little exclusion clause in, uh, you will find if there is no insurance, um, then it is your house, your land, your car that people are going to go for. Um, and so, you know, they've actually, they're in the catch-22, uh, and, and they've painted themselves into a corner. It's incredible what they're coming out. I mean, obviously we've heard of, heard of Agenda 21, uh, which has been rolled out uh, uh, in so many countries now. The one thing that Deborah was talking about regarding the technology that she'd come across from the White House website is the fact that they, wa they want to use Wi-Fi as a mesh network and have this mesh network right across and they can track and trace everything with this mesh network. Is that something that you've come across? Oh, yes. I mean, it, it, I mean it, it's no secret. Um, the U.S. have a supercomputer that can actually... It, it, it's something like a million billion computations a second and it can actually store and log if if that is what they want to do every single conversation used on Wi-Fi and cell phones and any other microwave device in the world and, and they can keep that and store it and and in fact I think they actually said they are doing that um, not too long ago um, so I mean, information for governments is power, and uh, it, it can be used many ways, many, many ways. It can be used to help people, but it can also be used to quieten people down and be used for blackmail. So if everything that you ever say, do, or touch is now being stored on computers uh, by governments, they're not storing it for their health. Uh, they are storing it for, for their own use. Uh, forever, whatever they want to do with it. Well, we uh, had and, we had the whistleblower Edward Snowden, who yeah. has come out regarding the NSA and all what they've been doing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I mean, when you mesh a whole block and a whole street, um, there is nothing you can do, say, go that cannot be logged. You, your movements in, they can even know and see you when you go to the toilet if they want to they can see you in the bath they can hear what you're saying everywhere you know all day um, it, it is absolute total observation of populations 
And, I mean, is there a solution to this, Barry? Is there any way that, is there anything we can do to, we won't be able to get rid of it completely, but is there anything that we can do re- to reduce them being able to do that? Um, well, the problem is, uh, the the people who have the power to do this, I mean, uh, putting it simply, you are up against, first, the most powerful industry on the planet. It has the government and the secret services in bed with it, along with the electricity generating boards uh, and the uh, pharmaceutical industry. So you're up against the the biggest people on the planet. Um, Whether the ordinary person can do something about it, um, I am hoping so because um, and the the problem isn't just Ireland and the United States. It is worldwide. And I'm not boasting here, sir, uh, and I make no money from this. My paper is free. But the paper I have just written, which is all peer-reviewed published uh, references, um, it has already been um, requested by over a quarter of a million people worldwide with this same concern. So we may have um, some very powerful people suddenly uh, sort of turning this around and saying, you know, we will do this and this, but not this and this. Um, So I'm I'm hoping that the world will come to its senses once this paper is out. Well, that's that's the next thing that we're going to uh, talk about, actually. Um, was this paper that you, we, we talked about it on the phone last week and one of the things that we're happy to do and you, you, you said well, you, do, you don't mind if we do this for you as well is that when you send us a copy to OIM what we'll do is we'll digitise it and we'll put it up and make it available on the OIM website for people to download and to read we really appreciate you putting all the time into this and making it available for free um, um, for educating people, so thanks for doing that, Barry. It's my. In fact, it, it was your decision, sir. Um, when I say your, it, um, in, in April, I was asked to be a speaker at the annual conference of the Irish Doctors Association, and as, as I said, they are renowned worldwide, really for being incredibly clever. Uh, and, and they have links all over the world. And, and this, the, the basis of this paper, the effect of basically Wi-Fi on girls from the age of five to when they're pregnant women. And one of the doctor, I, I spoke Saturday afternoon very early. I answered questions Saturday afternoon. They block booked a restaurant where the questions carried on. And then they asked me to answer questions all day Sunday from 11 o'clock till 4. So, I mean, they really went into this. And one of the doctors said, you know, you really must put this into a document. Uh, So I'm really following your doctor's request. And I've put it into a document. Um, It is free of charge and available to anybody in the world. Uh, And, of course, if you put it on your, your website and people come to you, uh, they can download it and take it away and read it. And I'm hoping it it is good enough to be used in a legal case anywhere in the world. Well, that's going to be brilliant. We're going to need that because we need to... We need to stop this rollout of Wi-Fi and obviously the smart meters as well and now the water meters over here in Ireland which yeah. I believe are going to be Wi-Fi also. Yeah, could um, I just uh, in, just suggest one thing here, sir? Yeah. Without insulting your intelligence or the intelligence of your doctors, I always write my research papers so that can be, they can be understood by an 11-year-old child. So any of your any of the the young the young adults listening to you if they think i would never understand a research paper this one you will uh, and i've had an expert uh, graphic artist do a picture as well to explain if there are words you don't understand they'll be in a drawing but it should be understandable by an 11 year old who has not studied science 
Fantastic. Well, what we'll do is obviously, I know you're going to get it over to us. Um, I, I know you said you have the envelope ready to go. When we get it, we will obviously have a read of it. And then if there, you know, if anybody wants to, when it's ready to download, if they're not sure of something, they can obviously contact us through email. And if we can answer the question from our knowledge, uh, we'd be happy to do that. Otherwise, we can give you a shout, I'm sure, if you don't oh. mind, just to clarify something. But as you say, you've made it in a way that it's easy for the general population to actually understand, which is, which is great. Yeah, and, and you can invite me back onto your program, sir, uh, with anyone from anywhere in the world with questions, and I'll, I'll happily be a guest again, free of charge, and answer all of the questions. Well, that's what we're going to uh, organise with you, Barry, shortly. Um, we're going to be talking about that shortly. We're going to be getting you on. I think we, are, we have talked about a date. But for people who want to tune in and to, to OIM Radio, Barry has been on the show twice before. And the podcasts are available for free. You just have to register for free on the site and download the podcast and hear Barry's two interviews that we did. We're hoping to get Barry on again in a few weeks' time to get an update on what's been going on. And I'd just like to thank Barry. This is just a quick interview regarding the information that Deborah Tavares sent us over that we wanted to clarify and obviously the release of the new document that Barry is going to be doing. So um, we will be getting Barry on, as I said, in a few weeks' time and we'll have a much more longer interview to talk about this technology. I'd just like to thank Barry for um, you know, ju just letting us do the interview because I know you're a very busy man, Barry. I know last week you had a camera crew in your house and you're, you're a man in demand. So a big thank you from OIM and all the listeners in OIM. And we will be in touch uh, regarding the interview in a few weeks' time. Yep. I will be posting it to you about... It. I'm picking it up Tuesday. I've got to check it again, finally. I'm hoping to get it into the post Wednesday or Thursday. I, I suspect it's three or four days to Ireland. So you, you should be there Monday. Brilliant stuff. Okay, Barry, just stay with us there for a minute. And we should be back after this. <laughs> 